Hi everyone, welcome back. It's Elizabeth, the author and website owner slash updater and controller of shockinglyme.com where you can find book reviews as well as short stories written by me. Yay for self promo, I'm getting much better at those. Uh, today, in case you hadn't picked up from the really cool earth and space theme plus the old school 3D glasses, we are talking about technology but not in the way that you would assume. Today we are reviewing There Is No Cloud, A Tech Mystery by Kat Wheeler, who is a super badass woman. And I just wanted to throw that out there now. I have gotten to email with her very, very briefly, uh, but I listened to a podcast that she was on. Like I said, I had emailed her very briefly. Um, and she's just amazing. We're going to learn a little bit about her. We're literally going to read it out of the about the author section of the book. And so this way you guys can get a chance to hear more about her. Kat has worked for 18 years in sales in the AV industry. Her love for technology starting early with her first computer, a Commodore 64, at the age of six. She loved it until she realized you could put a magnet to the screen and it made pretty colors. Kat spends a lot of her time traveling. She's been to 46 states and lived in six. She loves yoga, poker, sports, and all things technology. Her dreams are to one day stop traveling so much and be able to own a dog and to be the first woman to win the World Series of Poker main event. All of those things I am sure she's going to achieve, uh, including hopefully, slash I heard it's, it's coming true, so keep everyone's fingers crossed, writing a follow-up to this book called There Is No Cloud, which you can buy on Amazon, by the way. Uh, that's actually where my book came from. And it is a tech mystery. It is very well done. Cat uh, happens to work in the AV industry as a salesperson, as I mentioned. And if you're afraid that you're not going to know enough about technology or don't care so much about technology or it puts you off in some way, I strongly urge you to read this book anyway or give it a try if you like what I call fun mysteries. Uh, because I happen to work in the AV industry, true. I'm an executive assistant. I am very proud of what I do. And I'm very proud of all of the things I've learned at my, or I'm very proud of all the things I've learned throughout my time at uh, my current place of employment. But I am by no standards an AV qualified human being. I don't have any certificates. I had a, a terrible, terrible fear of technology prior and into the first couple of months of working where I currently work. And in the past few years, I've really, yes, have learned so much more about technology. I've learned how to use it. I've become less afraid of it. Uh, although this book, There Is No Cloud, uh, taught me a couple of things. One, technology can be really scary uh, when used by not the right people. Uh, and two, I actually learned what a cloud was, not, 100% just because uh, of this book, though Kat does explain, uh, at least in a very humorous way, an idea of what the cloud is, but also because I was talking to one of my coworkers who's a software developer, and he explained it to me, and I had that light bulb moment of, wow, who knew? Uh, and for those of you who don't know, the cloud, it's not just wireless or because of Wi-Fi or something in space. It's actually a bunch of servers in a warehouse. So there's essentially like a, a farm of, I, I don't even know if farm is the right word, but there's just a crack ton of servers in a warehouse that holds everyone's information, uh, which makes this a little more terrifying. Um, so to get onto the, the actual point of this story, this is a fantastic read. It's quick, it's fun, it's fascinating. It's very interesting from someone who works in the AV industry. It's really, really cool to kind of be able to pick up on some of the references, be like, oh, I think I know where she got that real life influence from. Um, but also it's really neat because it looks at like how technology can be scary, but also how it can be helpful. Uh, and it's 
I will say it forever, even though I'm sure murder mysteries are not supposed to be in any way fun. Uh, I find this to be a fun mystery. It is the characters have strong development. Uh, there's badass main female character, probably because, as I've said, my impression of Cat Wheeler is that she is also a badass. Um, I should probably have checked to see if you can say badass on YouTube, but I'm fairly certain, given what I've listened to come out of YouTube, that yes, in fact, you can. Uh, my musical choices, to say the least. But uh, great female lead. It's quick witted, but also relatively fast paced. You don't get bored. Uh, I had kind of been like reading a little here and there. And then one day I sat down and I read from page 75 until the end. And I'm pretty sure there's 251. We're going to check because we're a little neurotic. Um, we, I mean me. 255. There's 255. So I read from page 75 to 255, I think in like two hours. Um, I plowed through it. It caught my attention. Um, and it's just fun. Like you want to know what happens. You think you have an idea. And then are you right? Are you wrong? There's some twists and turns. There's also, because um, you know, where there's murder, there tends to be detectives. Uh, the detective in this book is just like the best. I want to be friends with him in real life. So Kat, if you by some chance stumble upon this, uh, please introduce me to your real life detective because he just seems like a hoot and a half. Uh, so I'm going to tell you what the back of the book describes this as because it's probably more succinct than I could ever do. And to give you an idea, because I'm sure me telling you like, you have to read it night might not make you feel inclined, but you never know what's listening. As a sales rep for Smart Tech, the world's largest home automation company, Cameron Caldwell's job is to keep customers happy and buying. That means the current bane of her existence is a rival company's home AI device, the Home Tech Hub. Her customers want to use the HTH's voice command to control the electronics she's selling them, and if she wants to keep selling to them, she needs to make sure that happens. Why can't they just ask if the weather and be happy with that? While attempting to get tech support for one of her clients, Cameron finds something strange in a home tech hub and is immediately curious. Is there something about the product no one's supposed to know? But when people start dying, she knows something far more complex is going on, and she's determined to find out what the technology the whole world has led into their homes actually does. As Cameron digs deeper into something she never thought would be possible, she starts to wonder what she's gotten herself into and whether she'll be able to get out. It's exciting, right? I think it's exciting. So, I mean, that's my humble opinion. Um, so you get to join Cameron in this journey of scary technology, twists, turns, plot, you know, development, character development, and get to the root of what could possibly be going on with this home tech hub. Uh, and for those of you who aren't familiar, the, this starts with the you never know what's listening. Um, that's a shout out to everyone's Alexa device, Google, like all of the devices that are supposed to listen to us, not to sound like I need a tinfoil hat, but if you've ever been afraid of what they hear and what they don't and what they record and what they pick up on, um, this might terrorize you and traumatize you. Uh, but then there's a good ending. So it'll it'll make you feel better. I It made me feel better. It made me feel very happy at the end of it, at least. Um, so that is my very rambly recap on There Is No Cloud by Cat Wheeler. You should definitely check it out. Uh, there was only two other things I wanted to touch on because I think I, I digressed a little. Um, it is, yes, a tech mystery novel, but it is a mystery novel. So if you are into that, again, I call them the fun mysteries or uh, fun murder mysteries. You should definitely, definitely check this book out. I would also actually recommend, um, it's called, it's the, it, there are a whole series. It's called The Home Crafting Mysteries by Cricket McRae. I don't own any of those books, though I have read all six of them um, and would gladly read them all again. Actually, it was why uh, my very first solo vacation, I took a trip out 
to the West Coast uh, purely because of that book. Um, so again, a small series that are filled with those lighthearted but spunky characters. It's a quick read and it's fun to figure out who done it. I guess a who done it is probably a better way of describing it. But I don't know. It's not like gory or intense murder. So it's, I don't know, they're lighthearted or I guess as lighthearted as you can make murder and super scary technology sound. But back to this, There Is No Cloud uh, by Cat Wheeler. I don't know how many times I've said it now, but I'm sure you're all very much aware. Um, the last thing I wanted to say about this book that I think is so, so cool, and I can't count the amount of times that um, I've said it, but the thing that makes her so, Kat, makes her so inspirational and so, so cool in my humble, humble opinion, um, it says here, and she talks about it in a podcast that she did, which I will put the link in the in the description as well, but she's been in sales. So I don't know, obviously the world's a little different now since COVID-19, but um, she was in sales, is in sales, still currently in sales. And for those of you who have ever been in a sales role or known someone who is in sales, there's a lot of travel associated with those types of positions. Obviously not all of them, but the majority of them, you need to go out, you need to meet clients, you need to have some type of, of quota turnover and all of those fun salesy words. Um, but when you are doing travel like that, you are constantly in a hotel room, you are, or depending on your position, you're traveling, you're flying, you're in a hotel, you're here, you're there. And what's really amazing is Kat said, and she says it in the podcast, um, it's not a direct quote, it's paraphrasing, but she basically said, I mean, how often, like how many times can you sit in your hotel room and watch TV or go to the bar or what do you do when you run out of books? And she decided to take all of her really cool, funny OMG moments, uh, stories of sales and create her own book, her own world of, of fiction that, yes, might be influenced by real life and real people and real experiences, but she made an entire world and a mystery, and she did a really good job. So props to her uh, for creating such a cool story, and hopefully it has eons and eons of success and that's probably not the right word but I just hope it's super successful I think this would be such a cool movie show to watch so you know if anyone wants to be a filmmaker it's a great book to start with um there is one thing because I don't you know want everyone to think that I'm just here to sing the praises of every book I read though I do tend to like the majority of books that I read uh probably because I I tend to pick out ones that interest me um there's the chapter titles in this book are hysterical. I did actually laugh out loud at a couple of them. There are passages in here that I've laughed out loud at. So, you know, something you don't necessarily anticipate from a, a murder mystery. Um, but the other thing is, is that there are a couple of like spacing issues that someone in the editing process might have missed. Um, she actually tells in the podcast, and I didn't see it in this copy, so there, it might have already been fixed, but there was like a character with, you know, the wrong name in the, toward the end of the story, but overall, super successful story, great mystery, it was fun, it was interesting, quirky, the characters are great, and it provides really awesome insight into the AV, AV industry, which I don't, I don't know if everyone knows what the AV industry is, um, the joke is that most people ended up here by mistake, and I certainly did. I applied for my job because I loved the job description and I thought it sounded interesting. I had no idea what AV was, and if I wanted to describe it now, I'd get really nervous and flustered and do a really awful job. But um, but you should definitely check out Cat Wheeler and her book, There Is No Cloud. Stay tuned because I heard there was a second one coming, which would make me ungodly happy um because I don't know there's something cool about a fun mystery that also applies to what I do keeps it keeps me on my toes and keeps my fear of technology technology ever pleasant ever present um so I'm gonna stop rambling now I'm sure that I should probably have taken a deep breath before talking about this book but it 
really just, I don't know, it made me happy. It made me not that I am by any stretch of the imagination old, but it made me feel young again, like reading a new genre for the first time. It's been a number of years since I have read something that is, you know, out of my books that I've come to know and love. And yes, while this is a mystery, it was definitely different and it was definitely worth the investment. So check out Cat Wheeler, her website, check out There Is No Cloud, buy it on Amazon, download it from the Kindle, whatever you want to do, but definitely check it out. Um, also check out our other book reviews on YouTube or on our website, shockinglyme.com. I say our, and it's really just me, but it makes me feel less nervous to say it. So I hope everyone has a beautiful day and stay safe with your technology. Don't say anything you shouldn't around it because you never know who's listening. Have a good night. Bye.